Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. From Homestead Media, this is HHS In-Depth. Coming up today on HHS In-Depth. As the construction of the new Homestead Edition moves along, we'll get you an update on its progress and a look at what has recently opened. Plus, we'll tell you about some of the programs and opportunities that the new Homestead will bring to its students in the future. Those stories and more straight ahead. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Caleb Wood. And I'm Jacob Bashford. And Caleb, it is officially our last time anchoring. That's right, Jacob. It's been a fun few years here at HHS In Depth. Absolutely. Well, one of the biggest changes to Homestead this year has been all the construction going around the school. And now, and to give us an update on the progress of the project and what students can expect to see returning to the school next year, here's HHS In Depth reporter Joel McChesney. The Homestead construction project has been a major topic around the school for the past few years. The construction crews have been working very hard and the progress of the project may surprise you. It's been going really well. What they told us is on day one of any construction project, you kind of almost know that it's not going to be exactly how it's supposed to. So I think we we knew that from the beginning. So yeah, it, it has gone smoothly. A lot of things have been working in our favor. Uh, that's just, I guess, the minutia of it. But uh, that's one example of things that show it's been going pretty smooth. The overall progress of the project has been right on pace. And Mr. Zor stressed that we've been very fortunate and not experienced any major delays. Nothing major like, oh, we can't do this, we can't do that. For instance, the Citadel was just opened here a, a couple weeks ago. You know, we thought maybe that would be done by January, but it was two or three months later. So not really a major setback because there's no exact promises. Hey, this is the exact date you're going to take possession of a certain building. Many new projects are currently underway with the completion date set for the start of next school year. Where Impact School was, there's two jutting peninsulas that will be torn down this spring, and then that parking lot will be finished, hopefully over the summer, hopefully ready for our buses to park there and drop off this fall. Our main student entrance, uh, again, it's across from the Citadel. Everyone's gonna be dropped off in the same area. You'll have the buses been going down one major hallway, closing door two entrance. We're gonna be closing uh, door 26. Phase three, so you've seen the northeast corner, uh, our main academic uh, wing is taking shape and that'll continue throughout the summer. The new fine arts wing with the auditorium and all those different something called the gray box, which is just a smaller theater. We're hoping that'll be ready by January. The Homestead construction project will continue throughout the summer with many new buildings accessible to students when we return from break. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Joel McChesney. Thanks, Joel. We're now joined by reporter Nisha Lauria. And Nisha, Senior Activities Day and graduation are just around the corner. That's right, Jacob, and many seniors are looking forward for these opportunities. But those familiar with the graduation pathways may not understand the importance of these pathways when it comes to graduating and partaking in these school activities. Graduation pathways can be found in your class of Canvas modules and has step-by-step -step directions on how to complete each module. Graduation pathways are implemented by the state and all students must complete them if they wish to walk graduation or even graduate at all. Though all students are required to complete these pathways by the due date listed in Canvas, completing these pathways is even more important for the class of 22, as those seniors get even more anxious to throw our caps and walk at graduation. If seniors do not complete all of the written components of the graduation pathway modules by May 13th, they will not be allowed to participate in Senior Activities Day on May 20th. Instead, they will be set up in the community room where they will have to complete the work instead of participating in the fun events of the afternoon with their friends. All graduation requirements, including the completion of the graduation pathway modules, must be completed by May 31st in order to be able to graduate and walk the stage on June 5th. The pathways may be tedious, but if you set a half an hour for just a couple of days aside, these pathways will be completed. So get them done as soon as possible so you can enjoy the final weeks of your senior year. Thanks for the reminder, Nisha. 
Well, we mentioned the construction update on the new school building earlier, but what will it bring students in terms of new opportunities? Here with that answer is HHS in depth reporter Thomas Lazar. The new school buildings will bring many new opportunities to Homestead. However, students may not be aware of how they will change learning and events. New building addresses a lot of physical needs. Obviously, as some parts of the building are upwards to 50 years old, certain parts just need updated. Now, in terms of Evolve, we're excited for lots of large, flexible spaces, lots of new access to technology. We're looking forward to a state-of-the-arts culinary area, as well as a larger theater auditorium. Also, the additional space in classrooms gives us the opportunity to grow with our area and our population. Not only are departments getting updated classrooms to enhance learning, the fundamentals will also be getting an upgrade that will change how some lessons are taught. With the development of different pathways and the Indiana Department of Education developing new ways for students to graduate, also the gray box, as it's going to be known, is going to be a space in the Performing Arts Center where we can host things, where we can have special events, where we can host certain groups, and we can have uh, events for students. Even though some of us won't be able to see these changes, it's good to know that future Homestead students will have even more opportunities than what is offered now. Reporting for HS In-Depth, I'm Thomas Lazar. As we're closing in on the last few weeks of the school year, it looks like we may finally be able to see consistent summer weather. The sun may continue to hide behind the clouds for a little bit longer, but we will still feel its heat. Stick around, I'll be back in a few to let you know what you can expect for the next couple of days in a few. Attention seniors, the time has come to submit your pictures for the slideshow that plays annually at graduation. Send in any pictures that showcase fun memories that you have from elementary to high school. If you would like to see your photos in the graduation slideshow, check your email to access the Google Sheet link where you can put as many photos as you'd like. Make sure to have all your photos in by the May 20th deadline, as there will be no extensions. Welcome back to HHS In-Depth. Attention students traveling to Iceland. There will be a mandatory meeting on Tuesday, May 10th at 6 p.m. in room 208. Bring your packet of information and your signed forms as they will be handing out backpacks and travel itinerary information. Be sure to bring a parent with you. Spartan Seniors, the I Believe in You Memorial Scholarship is due today at 2.45 p.m. in the Student Service Office. This $1,000 scholarship is in memory of former Homestead teacher Marius Senyon and is exclusive to Homestead High School seniors. Head on out to Parkview Field on Tuesday, May 10th at 4.30 p.m. for the varsity baseball matchup between your Homestead Spartans and the Carroll Chargers. Tickets are $6 and can be purchased ahead of time at parkviewfield.com. Go support the Spartans downtown at Parkview Field. Attention students, time is running out to purchase a yearbook. Please go to yearbookforever.com to make your purchase for $50. And now here is the rundown of clubs meeting at Homestead over the next week. Are you interested in current events? Do you enjoy discussing politics? Go to Young Progressives today from 2.45 to 3.30 in room 614, Mrs. Smith's room. All political viewpoints are welcome and snacks will be provided. K-Pop Club meets today after school in room 924. Young Americans for Freedom will be meeting again on Monday, May 9th, right after school in room 718, Mr. Bial's room. They'll be discussing the latest in current events and politics. All political viewpoints are welcome. More clubs meeting next week. Biomedical Science Club will host the last speaker of the school year, Wednesday, May 11th, in room 215 from 2.45 to 3.30 p.m. Their scheduled speaker is Dr. Mummert, an optometrist from Envision Eye Care. If you have any questions, contact Mrs. Behrens. And get on out to Homestead Students for Life's final meeting, Wednesday, May 11th. They will meet after school in room 937. They will be celebrating their first year, and the leaked news of Roe v. Wade will likely be overturned this June. They will have cookies and do some fun pro-life activities. The Homestead Commons has three new promotional wall displays in the hallway. To learn more about them and how you can have your own art put on display, here's reporter Carly Flanagan. Over the past few months, there have been a change in the posters that we see in the hallways. Many of these pictures are student-made and involve Homestead as a whole. We usually try to switch those out every quarter or semester. Dr. Ginder had had students create those, some of the ones that aren't just photos, but there's some kind of artistic ones too. We've had a rotation of those for 
last three or four years. Creative Homestead students can make their own designs or take pictures to potentially be in the new posters. We usually try not to have faces, so it's not like, hey, this is me, or it's just the, the huddle for the basketball team, you kind of see the team, and we try not to make it, hey, it's just a picture of these few kids. It's kind of representative of all the kids. If you would like to have your art on display, contact Mr. Zvers for more information. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Carly Flanagan. Well, this week's weather still wasn't up to par for the first week of May. But next week, it looks like the 80s may become the new norm. Graham DeWitt joins us now. Thank you, Jacob and Caleb. The rain that we saw earlier today will continue into the night. The temperature will not change too much either as it will not go below 50 degrees. If you have a dog that you need to let outside during the rain, it would be best to make sure that they don't track mud coming back inside. Fortunately, the rain will stop when we get into the weekend as it will mostly remain within the mid to high 60s. And on Sunday, it should crack back into the 70s for a little bit. It will, however, continue to remain mostly cloudy throughout. If you plan on playing a round of golf at some point this weekend, there will be perfect weather to do so despite some stronger winds at times. Yardwork season is right around the corner, so you may want to get a head start and begin mowing lawns and completing any outdoor activities that you may have. So will we continue to see more summer-like weather? I'll be back in a little bit with next week's Outlook to answer that question. All right, thank you, Graham. Next in sports, we'll get you caught up on Homestead Athletics over the past week. Anthony is in next in the Locker Report. Stay with us. Next week on HHS In-Depth, reporter Carly Flanagan will inform you about the officials that you see at every sports event and what they do. Catch this story and more next week. Welcome back to The Locker Report. I'm Anthony Gary. Well, everyone, we're within our last month of the school year, which means we are knee deep in the spring sports season, starting with the baseball team who beat Bishop Lures 14 to zero. Al Scraber led the way pitching for the Spartans with three innings pitched and only two hits allowed. At the plate, Jake Goody went three for three with three RBIs and Jackson Tudor also went 100% from the box going two for two with one RBI and two runs scored. The team will play a doubleheader tomorrow at home against Snyder. The softball game Saturday versus Delta was canceled, but the girls did compete Monday versus Cherubusco, which they would go on to win 7-1. to Ava Mejia was credited with yet another win, and Libby Minobi hit a two-run home run. Softball plays tomorrow at Warsaw. The boys golf team beat Huntington North Wednesday, 175 to 153. The golfers shooting under 40 were Cade Cobbler, 36, Ryan Parker, 38, and Jack Berta, also with a 38. And on Wednesday, the girls tennis team beat Canterbury 5 to 0 here at home. Ellie Cook, Anna Topmiller, and Layla Kelly all won singles, and the pairs of Lydia Stout and Reagan Sitlaw and Elena Schilt and Natalie Bloffis each won their matches in doubles. The girls compete again Monday at home versus Adam Central. The girls track team finished third in the Lime City Relays on Saturday. Outstanding performances came from Katherine Kruger and Lexi Goble in the 3200, Lauren Saddington and Lydia Shaw in the 1600, and the 4x400 relay of Hospin, McGuire, Connect, and Stedge. Senior night will be held Wednesday on May 11th. Well, two major developments to the IHSAA took place over the past week that are almost certainly going to affect Homestead sports. Joining me now is Noah Lance to break down the first of these stories. Well, Anthony, as you mentioned, the IHSAA took a major change and realigned the sectionals throughout Indiana, most impacting our Spartans football team. The new 6A sectional for the Spartans includes Fishers, Northrop, and Hamilton Southeastern. This will provide a greater challenge as the former sectional only included Carroll and Warsaw. I'll be back next week to inform you all on the two new sports that the IHSAA added and how Homestead will deal with these new additions. Thanks, Noah. And well, the Patsy Regional certainly is looking tougher for the football team, but we know what our guys are capable of. For The Locker Report, I'm Anthony Gary. Have a great weekend and stay tuned as weatherman Graham DeWitt We'll have a final check of the forecast when we return.
This next week will really begin to warm up with only one day not reaching 80 degrees. It should remain partly cloudy throughout the week, but thankfully we will not see clouds with rain. However, we will be able to see the sun a lot more on Tuesday and the temperature will not get any lower than 60 degrees throughout the week. It might be best to start turning on your air conditioner as this transition to warmer weather continues. As we begin to approach the final days of the school year, temperatures should continue to increase as they have recently. And one thing that is clear is that the hot weather is an indication that we are very close to summertime. Jacob, Caleb, back to you. All right, thank you, Graham, and thank you for watching today. Good luck to all of our Homestead athletes and other performers in action this weekend. Enjoy your weekend and have a safe, fun prom tomorrow night. We'll see you back here again next week.